So um, I am at the Uyghur Human Rights Project, as you heard. We are a Uyghur-run organization, though obviously I myself am not Uyghur. Um, at, but on behalf of this organization, I want to share with you a little bit about the campaign of very diversified repression that Uyghurs in China are undergoing and um, some of the roots that it has in much longer standing forms of discrimination that Uyghurs have faced in China. So as you might know, uh, maybe some parts of it, at least, if not the whole thing. Since uh, about spring of 2017, the Chinese state has been waging a campaign of repression against Uyghurs and members of other primarily Turkic uh, and or Muslim groups. So internment camps receive the most attention by far in media and these shocking numbers of a million or maybe even more than that um, have gotten a lot of attention, but there's so much more than that going on. So in addition to mass internment in concentration camps, uh, we've also been seeing mass incarceration of Uyghurs on the rise, elements of family separation, government ordered homestays where government cadres are going into people's homes to surveil them, um, a comprehensive and sweeping surveillance state bolstered by, bolstered by all sorts of facial recognition and other technologies, forced labor, political indoctrination, and on and on and on. So there's a lot of evidence for this in spite of the Chinese government's attempts to create a, an information vacuum in the region. Um, so we, we know this from government leaked documents, testimonies of people who've managed to get out, social media evidence that finds its way across the world and across borders and so forth. Um, now, Chinese authorities use the excuse of religion to talk about what they're doing. They say that they are, more specifically, the excuse of terrorism. Uyghurs, by and large, practice Islam. And China says there's a Uyghur terrorism problem that it has to curb. So they're saying, you know, this is counterterrorism, this is anti-extremism, but these are just excuses. Because what is really at the heart of the issue is a colonial dynamic and an imperial dynamic in which China is an outside ruler of a non-Han, and fundamentally, in many ways, it's problematic to say, but a non-Chinese region where it is concerned about the legitimacy of its rule and also um, the uh, sort of access to and control over natural resources and so forth. So, you know, these are dynamics that, of course, are not just relevant in this situation. Um, but, you know, we can see these similar patterns in lots of places all over the world. And, and this is really, I am convinced, what is at the heart of the issue. You know, this desire for land, a subjugation of a people so as to be the legitimate rulers of that land. Um, and, you know, one index of that is that the region in Chinese is called Xinjiang. Uh, Uyghurs and other local indigenous peoples don't call it that. They call it maybe Sharqi Turkestan, which means East Turkestan. Um, you know, there are completely different conventions, names, ways of referring to this place and interacting with the land. Um, so I already said this campaign started in 2017. In earnest, um, of course, it has many historical precedents to the things that have been happening specifically since 2017. This didn't come out of nowhere. Nothing that is happening came out of nowhere. And Uyghurs have complained about systemic racism and forms of discrimination for decades uh, at the hand of the state. So, you know, we just heard about governmental and societal discrimination as two types. You know, in, in this case, there, there are both that very much um, have reared their ugly heads for Uyghurs for decades and are continuing to now. In fact, in 2018, a scholar, a colleague of mine named Brian Thumb, wrote in a New York Times op-ed that um, this region had become, quote, a police state to rival North Korea with a formalized racism on the order of South African apartheid, end quote. And I thought that was a really apt way to put it that captured so much. That was in 2018. Um, I thought it was very, yeah. Is pithy and prescient and um, captures right the way that Uyghurs have been made into second class citizens over uh, a period of decades and decades. Um, and that's something we've only seen, you know, get far worse over the last few years. Mm -hmm.